Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got another video for you in our dry dock series of videos. Uh, this was not one that we were planning on making, and it'll probably be briefer than most other ones, but uh, without a doubt, it is the most uh, asked question that we've gotten, uh, especially in the last several weeks since starting this process. And I've mentioned it on a couple of other videos in this series, uh, but today we'll do a video just for this, so the next time somebody asks about it, I can just link them to the video direct. We're here in the wardroom of the ship with a 196 scale model of the ship built by Gil Yafredo. I love to use this model to point out where different stuff is around the ship. And uh, for today's video, the important thing to look at is the blocking underneath of the battleship. I haven't gotten around to building my uh, Lego dry dock with Lego blockings in it to show you guys yet. But uh, this model comes pretty close to showing what the blocking is like on an Iowa-class battleship. That's what the ship sits on when she's out of the water, like during a dry dock period. So, the ship comes in the dry dock, and she has to sit down on the keel blocks. These keel blocks are you know, somewhere around four foot square, so they keep the ship off of the floor of the dry dock. They will also support the entire weight of the ship, and it will make it so that uh, things like the big through hall openings for sea chests and things like that are not pressed up against the ground, and things like uh, propellers and rudders that might project out below the bottom of the ship a little bit also aren't uh, pressed against the ground. So there's, there's a lot of good reasons why you would put a ship on keel blocks. The Navy's plan for Iowa-class battleships calls for 306 four-ton keel blocks. These go in uh, primarily rows down the center of the ship. The ships were built with structural members specifically uh, built on the inside of the hull to be able to transfer the weight of the ship down into keel blocks in certain places. So on the various docking keels uh, for the skegs and. Uh, the, around the bilge keels and, and down the center line of the ship. So the ship is sitting on these blocks and because it's pushed up off the ground that allows us to paint a fair amount of the underside of the ship. However, obviously we can't paint the four times 306 square feet um, that is covered by these blocks the ship is sitting on. So, so the question I have gotten a tremendous amount lately is, well, how do you paint those areas? So first of all, sometimes you don't. So for example, on some of the museum ships I've worked on in the past, because of the amount of money that we've had to do the project, not being everything that we needed, uh, we did not paint the ship under the blocks. The idea being that we dry dock it in position one this time, and next time that we dry dock the ship, 20 years later, 30 years later, whatever the case is, uh, we paint it in a different blocking position. Most ships have three blocking positions. They're just called blocking positions, one, two, and three. And uh, they have the ship sitting on the blocks in different places, but each one of those places allows the ship to sit such that the blocks are not uh, blocking sea chests or pressing on something they shouldn't. So. Each time you dry dock the ship, you can just set her in a different position, and that will expose a different part of the hull. That still leaves uh, what painters call holidays, openings in, in your coating where they haven't painted, and it means that uh, your, your coating isn't bonding to itself the right way. It's certainly not the ideal, but it's understandable based on your budget. And, and for an active ship that's getting dry docked every two years, it might even make sense. For us, since we know it will be at least 30 years before we dry dock, uh, we definitely don't want to do that. So uh, different types of blocks can do different things. So for example, I have certainly seen blocks that are more or less on rollers that you can like use a chain fall to crank out from under the ship and then paint under that and then put them back and remove the next one in line. Uh, that's, that's pretty time intensive doing that. Uh, and, and you're only getting a, a small section each time you paint, and then you gotta move it, wait for it to dry, move it back, do the next one. Uh, and quite frankly, we don't have enough time in the yard to do this. 
Uh, likewise, Texas is doing something similar. I'm pretty sure Travis has mentioned in one of his videos that they're using sandbags. So you can essentially uh, open that bag, let the sand drain out, remove the bag, and, and now you can access that. So it's the same idea. You can move this out of the way once it doesn't have the weight of the ship on it, paint that area and put it back in. And again, Texas is in dry dock for, uh, I don't know, something like 10 months or a year. So they've got the time to do that sort of work. And it's gonna be cheaper for them to do it, but more time intensive. And like our, our yard period's probably gonna be about 60 days. We don't have the time for all of that. So, what we're gonna do, and what, what is the, the primary method of this that I've always heard about, is what's called fleeting the ship or giving her a bump. So what that means is we're gonna reflood the entire dry dock. That's pretty expensive because we have to flood it and uh, drain it out, but it's very quick. It's a one day evolution. Reflood the entire dry dock. The ship's going to float just a little bit off the blocks. That's also gonna give us the chance to check for through haul leaks before the very end of the project when finding some would delay us. Then we're gonna move the ship about four feet uh, forward and that's going to just set the ship back down again and leave a completely new part of the hull exposed. The Iowa class battleships were designed to have to do this twice and with full government funding in a navy yard that's completely doable. Uh, we are going to set ours up so that we only have to do it one time and that's going to save us a tremendous amount of money. So, uh, the, the short answer to the question of how do we paint what's under the blocks is once we've painted everything else, we refloat the ship, move her just four feet, set her down again, and then we can paint the whole area that was covered before. A rumor that I've always heard that the Navy keeps sets of blocks around for each ship, or at least each class of ship. And, you know, that might be true for major classes, however, in my experience, shipyards have blocks of various sizes, big four foot square ones, like several ton blocks for the Iowa class, and then smaller ones for smaller ships that are easier to move around. And then they've got wooden caps on them. They're just made out of cheap dunnage, like uh, easily disposable, easily modified, uh, big blocks of six by sixes or eight by eights or whatever the size might be based on the blocks that they can put on there and they can shape the angle of the hull into it. Even though dry dock number three is where Wisconsin and New Jersey were built and Washington and a bunch of other large ships, they no longer have the 306 odd keel blocks that they need for this ship. So they're actually gonna bring some blocks down on a barge from one of their other yards. Even then we're gonna have fewer keel blocks than the Navy plan. Fortunately, we're significantly lighter than the ship ever was in service, so that's not going to be a huge problem. And We're going to make a new modified blocking plan uh, that will account for the number of blocks that we have, and that's also going to be critical to reducing the number of bumps that the ship does. It's also going to be a critical component of when the ship goes into the yard, because we have to wait for the ship ahead of us to leave the yard, and then it's going to take at least a week, maybe more, for them to not only get all these other blocks down here and ready to go, that they've got to shape them the way the blueprints call for, that they've got to position them. Uh, so, so it will take a while for them to reset the dry dock between when the last ship is in the yard and when New Jersey is able to come in. And since it's such a long period in between dry docking museum ships like New Jersey, they almost certainly are not going to save uh, that configuration of blocks and they're going to reshape it for use on future ships. So there is not just a set of blocks for the Iowa class laying around, uh, at least not here in Philadelphia. So what are some questions that you guys have about the dry docking process? This video was uh, shot specifically because so many of you guys asked about it. So uh, let us know your questions in the comment section down below. And if it's not something we've talked about in the past, it could very easily find its way into a future dry docking video. Remember to tune in every Wednesday night at 7 Eastern Standard Time for another episode in this series. And uh, remember that your support is very helpful to us completing this project. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. 
also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Your support is what has gotten us this far, and we really appreciate it. There's a link in the description to donate towards the dry docking project. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the museum. Thanks for watching.